Hello and welcome to this first in what's going to be a series of tutorials on how to use SketchUp to design plans for RC aircraft models, specifically models built out of Dollar Tree or similar foam board, like what flight test models are like. Um, so we're going to be using SketchUp. It is both Mac and PC. There's a version for each platform. You can see here that I'm actually running on a Mac. Uh, they're basically the same program. There's really no big difference between them. Now, one recommendation before you get too far into this, uh, you are going to want a mouse that has a scroll wheel. Uh, the uh, mouse that I normally use on the Mac is, has a touch surface on it, and you use that to scroll normally. But with this particular program, it's a little too sensitive. So you really want to have a physical scroll wheel because it helps with the zooming and navigating and moving around your scene. Um, so you can see when you start up SketchUp, you get this default scene uh, with a kind of person here as reference and scale. Uh, and you have a sky and a ground plane. And you'll also notice you have these uh, three different colored axes. You have your vertical blue axis, and then your green and your red axis that kind of move through the scene. Uh, these are basically your X, Y, and Z coordinates uh, referenced here. But uh, since they're color-coded, SketchUp doesn't really refer to them as X, Y, or Z. It refers to them by their color. So from now on, that, when I'm referring to an axis, I'll refer to it by its color. Uh, and you'll see that there's a lot of things that are built into SketchUp to kind of help communicate which direction you're moving something along a particular colored axis or having something snap to something else. Um, SketchUp tries to help you along as much as it can. Now, when you open up this view for the first time, uh, you're looking in, at it in what's called a perspective mode. And what perspective mode is, is you're looking at it in a three-dimensional representation. So items that are closer to the camera will be larger. Things that are further back in the distance will be smaller. And if I duplicate this person here a few times, and I'm using some keyboard shortcuts, uh, that I'm not going to go too deep into in this first lesson, but just know that I'll be talking about keyboard shortcuts the whole time we go along. Uh, so here, because we're looking at this in perspective, the person who's closest to us is larger, and then as the people go into the background, they get smaller. Uh, basically, you have a vanishing point out there in the distance, and everything kind of tapers off and has foreshortening to try to, to communicate a three-dimensional space on this two-dimensional computer screen that we're looking at. Now, that's fine, and uh, you know, in most games and, and 3D type environments, that's usually what you, how you look at a scene. However, we're going to be spending most of our time in a different mode, and uh, we're going to switch to that by going up to camera and switching to parallel projection. You'll notice that now all of them are the same size, regardless of how close or how far they are from the camera or our viewpoint, and this is more of an isometric blueprint, if you will, sort of way of looking at our scene. Now, right now we're sort of looking at the scene through this specific kind of disembodied eye that we can move around and look at things from any angle. You can see that these are basically kind of like cutout cards, the default person. Uh, I'm going to throw in a little bit of geometry here and don't get too hung up on the fact that I'm just kind of jumping in and doing new things. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to do each of these things I'm doing as we go along. But just for this particular demonstration, I just need something that uh, will allow us to kind of see the type of viewport that we're looking at. All right, so here we have a quick little house of some sort. All right, and along with this kind of user view that we can rotate around, there are some built-in default views. So if we go up to camera and choose standard views, you can see there's top, bottom, front, back, left, right, and then something called ISO. And you can switch to them just by clicking on it from the drop-down. Or what's even faster, you'll notice that if you're on a PC, you'll say control, you'll have a control symbol up here, and then the number one through seven. And on the Mac, it's command. You can quickly switch between these views by just holding down that key and in this case, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, it says bottom, front, back, left, right, and top. And if you go all the way to 7, you get this sort of default angle called ISO. And now, regardless of which view you've switched to, at any point, you can use the orbit tool here to then just rotate around and go into your kind of free user mode. 
Now, let's say that you wanted to kind of move along a surface. So if I'm zoomed in on something here on this side and I just kind of wanted to see what's over here on the left hand side, rather than rotating all the way around, there's a way that to pan, which is what this hand tool is demonstrating. If I click here, I can basically move horizontally, vertically in my normal user view, just left, right, up and down. And then using the zoom tool, you can zoom in and out, but you'll notice that I've been zooming without even choosing this magnifying glass. That's because the scroll wheel on the mouse is actually set up to be your scroll no matter what. And honestly, I rarely ever end up clicking on this icon. I just use the scroll wheel. So two, your first two keyboard shortcuts you're going to want to remember are for the orbit tool, which is your rotation of your view, and that's the O key on the keyboard. So regardless of what tool you have, if you hit O on the keyboard, it automatically switches you here to the orbit. And then for the hand, you want H for hand, and that's your pan. So regardless of what tool you may have selected, if you just go O, then you can orbit, and if you go H for hand, you can move around. Then of course, if you hit spacebar, that's the same as switching over here to your arrow tool, which is the select tool. That's how you basically tell the software what object or what part of an object you want to focus on or, or manipulate. So just to review, our first three keyboard shortcuts are O for orbit, H for hand, and then spacebar for our select tool. All right, and that's the basics of moving around inside of SketchUp. So in the next lesson, I'm going to talk about drawing shapes and manipulating objects and actually kind of getting into the drawing. So take a look at that one next.